Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a quick look at the up-and-coming Gnome 43. This right here is Fedora Rawhide. Rawhide gives you the ability to kind of preview and test up-and-coming software. Go ahead and dive into our settings here. Scroll down, go to About. You can see exactly what's going on here. This is on the Slimbook Executive. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss that review. But if we go ahead and scroll down here, we can see we are on the 43 beta running Wayland. Now, the first thing and probably the thing I am most excited for is up here, the new toggles. So if we click on this top bar, you can see that this little menu is going to be looking completely different. Right here, we have toggles, so easy access to go ahead and change our Wi-Fi. There's currently not a uh, drop-down toggle for Bluetooth, but I do hope that will be coming soon. We have some quick options for our power settings and more, including nightlight, dark mode, and airplane mode. But the thing out of all of this that is something that should have been introduced a very long time ago is the option to go down here and pick your output and input sound devices. This is something that we've been having to use an extension for for far too long, and I'm incredibly happy that it is now just included by default in GNOME. And of course, that is not the only feature change. Let's go ahead and open up Nautilus, the file manager. So give this a click from our bottom dock here. And this right here is the Nautilus we've all come to know and love. Right now, if we go ahead and minimize it, you can see now the sidebar will go ahead and collapse, has a really nice animation effect. So when you make your windows smaller, that will happen. And right here, we could go ahead and toggle it if we would like to off and on just by clicking this button here on the top left. Overall, if we go ahead and open this back up again and switch on to the list view, it looks and functions a lot better with some more space between the icons, better highlighting functionality. And we could go ahead and favorite things with a nice little animation. You can see that little, uh, Nice star rotation there. A feature that was reintroduced is if we go ahead and plug in a USB drive. You can see right here, this is my Fedora Live install, but now if we go ahead and give this a right click, we now can format from here. So if I clicked on format, it would then bring up our disk manager here and then I could format it from there. And just overall, if I go over to documents here, for example, go to properties, the actual properties window has had a refresh to kind of more match the GNOME styling. If I go to permissions here, you can kind of see what's going on. Overall, it just looks a lot better. And of course, there's going to be some other applications getting updates. If we go ahead and open up our default calendar application, over here we have a new sidebar with a date picker and an agenda list. So I'm going to go ahead and add a quick item real quick. So I'm adding an important meeting at Eastern Washington University. I'm going to have this last for an hour and everything else looks good. So I'm going to hit done. And then you can see over here, I have my important meeting. There's new security report. So if we go ahead and jump into settings and go over here under privacy, this very last one right here, device security. You can see right now my system's not doing very hot as we're at security level zero, secure boot is off. And let's see if I click on security level one, it will give us a rundown of some of the things that we can do to kind of up our security. For this one, it would be like firmware permission lock enabled, UFI secure boot, and some others. As of right now, a lot of these down arrows don't work, but I'm assuming they're going to be adding more specific information of what you can do in there. Now, if we go ahead and dive into our GNOME software center, you'll see some improvements here as well. For example, let's just go ahead and go to the very first editor choice, which is the GNOME builder application right here under install, you have a better option to select the source. So I could go Flathub or just normal Fedora Linux. And there's been some other improvements. So if I go ahead and scroll down here, we have an other apps by section. And if I go ahead and go back and open up the about software page, all of the about pages within GNOME have had a slight refresh, which makes it all kind of, again, follow the overall theming and scheming that they're looking for. So if I hit credits here, you can see all the people that this is by. It would be cool if these linked to like their specific GitHub pages, but maybe in the future. And of course, there have been a lot of other minor changes and improvements, and there's probably going to be more as time goes on. Overall, I'm feeling like this version of GNOME is kind of a step towards uh, making this look and feel a lot like Mac OS, especially with these right here. This is very similar to the shell in Mac OS. And it seems like both GNOME and Mac OS have kind of the same design end goal with kind of high usability, mobile friendly design, and just overall an incredibly clean and modern user interface. Granted, I do think GNOME shell is a little bit better because they support super innovative features such as window snapping. <laughs> With all that, I'll link to my sources and downloads and all that down below. I do hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and goodbye.